First, we'll be doing the Pledge of Allegiance. So everybody please stand. Hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess I will ask Rudy to do the roll call. <clears throat> Board Member Boussin, absent. Uh, Vice Chair Durbala. Present. Board Member Knox. Present. Board Member O'Hara. Present. Board Member Osaki. Present. Board Member Shanebeck. Present. And Board Member Waldy absent. We have a quorum, Mr. Chairman, five present, two absent. Okay, next we'll go to the consent agenda. Does, is there any uh, consideration or approval of the agenda? Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Adjustment accept the agenda as presented to approve the minutes from the meeting of November 9th, 2020. I have a second. I second. Is your mic on, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Roll call of the for a vote. Vice Chairman Durbala. Yes. Board Member Knox. Yes. Board Member O'Hara. Yes. Board Member Osaki. Yes. Board Member Shane Beck. Yes. Motion passes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, next we will have the public hearing presentation, discussion, public hearing and consideration of case of P21-82-BA, <coughs> a request by John Holt for a variance Pursuit to the City of Apache Junction Zoning Ordinance Section 1-16-4, requesting to reduce the front and side yard setbacks for a future main structure on RS-54, low-density single-family residence, zone property at the northwest corner of Hilton Road and Smoke Tree Street alignment, parcel number 1024-0232. Staff, are you ready to present this? Yes, thank you. Good evening, Board of Adjustment <coughs> Members. My name is Nick Lefich. I'm an associate planner here for the city of Apache Junction. This is my first time presenting to this board, so it's nice to meet you all. Uh, tonight I represent planning staff in presenting our recommendation for case P-21-82-BA. Now this is a request, again, by John Holt. Uh, the owner of this parcel located right here, um, and it is right on, so we have Hilton Road right here, and then we have a smoke tree street alignment. There's not, currently not a road that goes through there, but it aligns to the rest of smoke tree uh, further to the west, uh, so that's kind of how we identified it. Um, this, this request specifically is to reduce the front yard, which is on the west, set back from 30 feet, and the side yard setback of 20 feet, street side yard on the south, to five feet. So just for, for further demonstration, uh, to explain, there's, there are these 33 foot federally patented easements, which is where these, uh, these road alignments or where these roads are. So on the east side, we have Hilton Road. On the west side, there's Vaquero Road. And then on the south side, even though there isn't a road going through there, uh, an easement has been reserved uh, way back since everything was surveyed by the federal government in the, in the 1900s, um, mid-1900s. They reserved these easements uh, all throughout the city. And in this case, this was one reserved with roadway rights, utility rights, and so forth. Uh, and it has that smoke tree alignment. And, and that bears significance on this property because it has one on, all, on three sides of it, uh, which is a little bit more of a burden than normal. Uh, since normally you have, as shown here, you have things on the, on the west side and on the east side, and they just happen to get kind of a lot with all three, as well as a wash. And that, show, that demonstrates what's shown here. Uh, the applicant has proposed, they, they've shown some documents with the building envelope. First you have from the property line a 33 foot easement, and then there is the RS-54 front setback of 30 feet. And that puts their house up to about here. And there is the street side yard setback of 20 feet, uh, and which I, I corrected, it's actually even further north, so it squeezes the property even further than what's shown here. And then per our engineering standards, when there is a wash running through the property, 
uh, there is a 15 foot erosion protection setback from the top of the bank, which is further shown here. This is their proposed site plan. But you can see here's the center line of the wash. Then you have the top bank of the wash. And then there's that additional 15 feet required by our city engineers as a uh, erosion protection setback. Uh, just because with, you know, sometimes we have flash floods, we have water. It's for the protection of the home. It's also for the protection of, of homes down the road. Uh, just as, as bearing when you have construction, it impacts the wash. Uh, we require that distance just so to protect that, to prevent any mishaps down the road. So with that, again, the request is, is that this front 30 feet, or yeah, this front 30 feet is reduced to five. So a reduction of 25 feet there and that this south 20 feet is reduced to five feet as well. So that way that expands our building envelope a little bit because of the constraints due to both the setbacks, the easements and the wash. And uh, uh, they propose that eventually they, they want a guest house on the east side of the property, but that doesn't impact any part of this, uh, the variance request that meets the, the proposed setbacks as they are. So site performed a site visit. This image doesn't show it as well, but the geography and topography of this parcel is that there is a slope on both sides going or gradually coming downwards to the wash in the middle. Uh, so essentially you have kind of a plateau on the west side and on the east side and the topography further constrains the development of the lot because of uh, the slopes meeting downward. And as such, John Holt, the owner of this property, has requested a variance in order to, to allow this change in the building setbacks so that there's a larger building envelope on the, to, on the uh, flat plateaus on the west and east side of the property. So per, per the zoning ordinance a variant and the state law, a variance may only be granted if there are some sort of special circumstances applicable to the property specifically. That could be size, shape, topography, location, surroundings, and so forth. And if the granting of an ordinance isn't, uh, sorry, if the granting of the variance will not cause any kind of uh, substantial difference between this property and the properties neighboring it, that it won't cause any kind of hardships to the property around it, um, and it, it must be granted if there is a hardship, genuine hardship on this property. It cannot be a use variance, which in this case is not applicable. That would be specifically if, if they were asking to have like a commercial business here on a, on a residential property that, that would otherwise be prohibited and they're asking, can you make an exception for that? That's something that we can't grant. Um, and also the, so the special circumstances cannot be self-imposed. And in this case, we believe that the natural topography is this difficulty and the hardship presented. And so staff's recommendation is the approval of P-21-82BA, the, the variance granting the reduction of the setbacks. Uh, and in addition to the two conditions found within the staff report, an additional condition was proposed after the issuance of the staff report that the wash and erosion protection setback area identified here. So within this space, Uh, so that 15 foot section for the top bank of the wash shown on that proposed site plan, it shall not be filled, diverted, or altered in any way other than the construction of properly engineered and permitted retaining walls. And the, the motivation behind that third condition is just that there isn't any kind of alteration of the wash that causes any issues in water flow for the neighbors to the north or south and, and preserves the, the natural flow of the wash itself. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. The applicant is also here. Sure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a number of questions. Yes. Are there any variances granted in that neighborhood for any other houses similar to this? Um, there are some granted uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, Who would have granted those? Sorry, what? Who would have granted those? I know in the last five years we haven't here. In the last five years, there haven't been many. The most recent one was last year. It was specifically a, uh, a for a similar reason with the wash, it was the Ruthert's, it was BA-1-20, which was, it was uh, to be able to put a guest home in a front side yard, and that was due to, to similar between the easements and between the, uh, the wash that was located on that property, and, and I don't have the exact address, I apologize. 
but because of that situation, uh, they were granted a variance in order to allow for that zoning exception. Uh, other than that, I don't believe there have been many variances. And the house to the north has a fence along the road, along Vanquero. Can you tell me that fence, where does that fall on their property line, and where would the house to be built wind up in relation to that fence? Uh, on the property to the north? To the north, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, you had yeah, the okay, So the on. fence is at that 33-foot line. So um, <coughs> the fence is currently where the easement stands. So the proposed house, which will be uh, located with Vaquero as the front yard, will be approximately five feet off of that edge of the fence, par uh, running parallel. That would be the edge of the house. Uh, the edge of the house will be five feet back right. from where so that fence is. <coughs> if they'd want to put a fence in on a property line, they'd have to have a five foot, all they'd have is five foot yard there. Uh, in the front yard specifically, yes. Okay. Uh, and in the case of the front, a front yard wall has to be set back uh, according to the front setback as well. So, so in this case, um, the fence. How would a wall work in that case? Uh, Actually, let me, let me readjust some things. So I believe the property just to the north of this is actually addressed off of Hilton. Um, or I don't believe so, no. I think that's on Van Quero. Mr. Chairman, uh, board member Shane Beck, the yeah. property to the north, 1889, an odd-numbered property would technically be uh, addressed off of a Caro. Okay, sorry. I, I thought I saw the... Uh, the drive coming in from the mm -hmm. east. Mm -hmm. And you're asking about the fence between that property and the, and the subject property that we're talking about? No, the, the, be the fence between that north property and the road. What's the relationship oh, oh, there? Oh, oh. And then if this house is going to come within five feet of that easement, where is he going to put a front yard fence? Okay. I, I, I don't think they're proposing a front yard fence, but maybe the applicant can answer that. And uh, what is the size of the proposed house, square feet? Uh, sorry, I believe the applicant may be able to answer that. I have the, uh, the site plan, but not everything was fully dimensioned. Right, yeah, I so. couldn't find it on there either. I, I believe the applicant may be able to. Can you please come up to the mic? We're still at the point of ask and answer and questions, okay. so for procedural purposes, the applicant's gonna get a chance to get up, say anything he wants, and then you'll open it up for a public hearing, and then okay. you'll then talk about it among, uh, up, here, up here. Okay, so one more question here, please, okay. Nick. Um, a, a, a house was purchased approximately a year ago. Have there been any changes in our zoning ordinances, easements, setback uh, requirements? since that property was purchased about a year ago? Not specific to residential. Uh, there there have, have been some alterations to the commercial code, but, but no. nothing, nothing affecting this, no. Okay, so everything in place now was in place when the property was purchased. That would be correct, yes. All right. Nick, can you find it? The yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm looking for the street names. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So to ask your question, what, oh, I'm gonna turn this on. Larry Kirsch, Director of Development Services. So we don't have the lot lines on here. Right. And the lot lines we were showing on the city GIS may not be exactly That's in why I'm space wondering where they are. So this looks like a block wall where the 33 foot FPE is, don't know. Rudy, correct me, I believe you can have a a fence in the front yard that doesn't meet the setback if the fence is has four feet and two feet opaque. So you actually can have a fence on the lot line that's only four feet tall and the top two would be opaque. And it can be five feet from the main house? There's no, no requirement there? No. Okay. No, and typically what you'll see, I didn't have to go back to the site plan, is you know, maybe the, the garages, if the building is five feet from the lot line, that typically might be the garage or something, I don't know, but we can go back to the site plan, so. Um, 
Where's your slideshow over there? Sorry. So Any I other can questions from the pull up the site plan. So with yeah. with what is proposed, so this is the the location of the the 33 foot federally patented easement. The fence line to the north is approximately uh, on this line, and so they they could do that that four feet solid, two feet opaque on that line. Um, any further would kind of put it in the existing Vaquero Road, so we would not recommend that. And this would be Nick the. Uh the garage is going to be facing the doors this way, so you pull in and you pull in here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions from the board? No other questions? We will go to the public hearing. Actually, you could ask the applicant to... Well, I, the applicant comes first. I know that. I was getting ready to say that. Well, Mr. Holt... Please come to the podium now. It's your time to speak, and we can question some things with you. Sure. I'll start with a couple right off the bat. Um, it, the latest addition they put in there about the wash and erosion protection setbacks that are identified as the 15-foot, you were told about that right now, right? Correct, yes. And you don't have a problem with not making sure they're not filled in? Well, diverted? as is. That was the plan originally, so we want to keep it just the desert just like it is well the reason is is we've had a lot of people that have told us and even when i was on the p and z that they did that and then two years later they fill it in and we start having floods and the floods affect people across marine across the trail and all the way down to uh, southern so i want to make sure that that's totally understood totally understood um our neighbor right here downstream from us is here with us today and uh, we befriended them, and I would not want to put any type of burden on them whatsoever. So, um, yeah, we want to just keep it as is. So, okay, as it says, you can do, you can alter it only if it's proved by uh, consideration of property engineered and permitted retaining walls. Okay. Okay. We agree to that. All right. Does anybody else from the board or commission have questions? Just the size of the house. How many square feet? Uh, roughly what you see right there is 2,800 square feet, and that accessory is roughly 1,000 square mm -hmm. feet. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. No other questions? Is there anybody else that wishes to speak about this? Are you opening the, pub Are open you opening the public hearing? I'm opening it to the public now. Thank you very much. Anybody from the public like to speak? Please come up. <coughs> Identify yourself with your name and address. Randy Evner, 1760 North Hilton. We're directly to the south of where John's going to build his property. We have new issues. Um, we've talked to him several times, and we're south of him, so the water goes our direction. And we've already talked about how we're going to do, how it's going to just going to flow through natural. So <coughs> we don't have any problem with any of the access he's talking about. Does anybody have any questions for the individual? Um, I think I do. Yep, go ahead. Oh, can we ask questions of the public during a public hearing? Uh, no. Okay. We can't? Sorry. But you can you ask can. staff or you can ask the applicant. Correct. You, but you can't ask oh. the Sorry. general public. Thank you. Unless you're a mind reader and you can answer the question then. <laughs> Sorry. Did you want to ask a question to the applicant? We can bring him back up. Uh, no, I prefer to ask it to somebody that's already lived there for a while. Okay, well, I guess we can't do that. Yeah. So. That's fine. Okay, I guess then we go to... Are you closing the public hearing? Um, does anybody else from the public like to speak? Then we'll close the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Chair, I do want to remind the the board <clears throat> this is an unusual case this one involves um, a recommendation favorable to staff so that's why there's no attorney for you here tonight because we don't anticipate any real um, arguments however when you do make a motion make sure you state the findings before you make the motion or actually the findings should be part of the motion the findings can be found on one of the on the motion page but you have to have the findings of fact no matter how you vote. 
and that should be part of the vote. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. So you can have a discussion about it now, and then once the discussion's over, if you still need to ask more questions or you feel something needs to be asked, you can reopen the public hearing, um, and then you can discuss it, and then of course uh, you'd then call for a motion. Okay, let's have some discussion on it if there's any. <coughs> oh, I've always got something to say. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I have concerns over this for a couple of reasons. One is we are not supposed to grant a variance for something self-imposed. Well, the, the lot was purchased with specific conditions on that lot at the time of purchase. Um, by designing a house that was going to violate those conditions, to me that's the self-imposition of circumstances. Maybe that's convoluted reasoning, but I don't see it that way because you could justify then any size house. You'd say, I want to build a 10,000 foot house, but the wash doesn't allow me to do that, so I need to increase my setback. Now that would be an extreme case, but I think there's some validity to that uh, perspective. Another uh, hesitancy I have is degree of variance. If we were talking five out of 30 feet, that would be something different, but we're talking 25 out of 30 feet, so we're really kissing off that, that setback. It's a pretty dramatic change. In a lot of circumstances, that would really make a neighborhood look pretty strange. Um, I'm glad to hear of a good relationship with the neighbor to the south. That was a concern. Uh, the size of the house originally was a concern. I'm glad to hear the size is reasonable. Uh, the house to the north is much bigger. Um, it's a unique kind of neighborhood layout. Uh, it's not just a, a city block, everything's square. This is kind of filling in a, a blank spot. So despite my concerns, um, I, I would be in favor of this. I just want to have it on record that this is a large variance from, five, from 30 to 5 feet and from 20 to 5 feet. That's a big change. And also that the owner decided to make a house this big. He could have made a smaller house to fit on that lot. But in the, the situation that it is, I can't see on it, trying to unwind it. But this is a pretty borderline as far as my opinion goes. Thank you. Anybody else have uh, comments? I think, um, just to your note, I think looking at the site plan itself, it does look proportionate, though. It doesn't, it doesn't look like the house would overtake the entire parcel, so I think the human element here is that it makes sense. Anyone else on the board? Okay, well, my comments on it is I think these, when these people bought the house, they probably did not realize all the different setbacks that they had. They did not realize that they had to worry about the drainage ditch. At least we got a solid statement that they will not fill in the drainage and they understand how important that is for the rest of the people down the roads here. Because uh, I've been on a council and on planning and zoning for a number of times and I know how this thing can cause floods, uh, that was one of the things I called Rudy about as soon as I got my paperwork. Um, called him within an hour after I read it and asked, well, what about the flooding part? And Rudy come up and he says, uh, I can write something up for you so you can put it in as part of one of the motions. So since nobody else had anything to say, then I'm gonna make a motion. Well, Mr. Chair, if I oh. can say one thing. May I? Yes. Mr. Chair and the board. <clears throat> Just to remind you that Apache Junction City Code Section 1-16-4 uh, says a variance may only be granted if because of special circumstances applicable to the property, including its size, shape, topography, location, or surroundings. The strict application of the zoning ordinance will, resort, re, will result in unnecessary property hardships. 
result in serious impairment of substantial property rights and deprive such property of privileges enjoyed by other property of the same classification in the same zoning district. And then it does go on to say, as long as the proposed modifications are not a use variance or if the special circumstances applicable property are self-imposed by the property owner. So what that means is because of the property itself, it has these unique characteristics. At least th that's how staff looks at it. That's how staff has um, suggested certain findings. And so th there are special circumstances. The question of self-imposition, well, they bought the property, yes. They bought it that way, but that by itself, does that make it not a special circumstance because of the topography? The topography with the wash is unusual. Not every single lot in the city of Apache Junction is that way. There are some. Also, looking at the federally patented easements on three sides, that is, it's not unique, but it is a little unusual when this happens to uh, a property owner when there's three 33 foot easements on three sides and it does restrict the setbacks. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay. So I can go ahead and make the motion. I'm making recommended motion for approval. I move the case P21-82BA, a request by John Holt for the Board of Adjustments and Appeals to grant a variance of section 152 residential bulk regulations requesting a deviation for the main structure front setback and the street side setback in RS-54 zoning district for the property identified as parcel number 100-24-023C be approved subject to the following conditions. The main structure front setback and the street side setback shall be reduced to five feet. Number two, that all future construction of the, on the property continue to be properly permitted and be in compliance with normal setback regulations and flood zone requirements. Number three, the wash and erosion protection setback area identified as the 15 foot sections from the top bank of the wash shown on the proposed site plan, exhibit number two, shall not be filled diverted or altered in any way other than the construction of properly engineered and permitted retaining walls. Findings of facts, there are special circumstances or conditions applicable to the re property referred to in this application which do not prevail on other property in that zone or immediate area. These step special circumstances or conditions include this the property is encumbered by a natural wash which limits the availability of buildable area. The property is bordered by federally patent easements on three sides which further limits the amount of building, buildable area and serve to cause a unique situation on this property. A second. I have a second. I'll ask for a roll call vote. Board member Shane Beck. Yes. Uh, Vice Chairman Drabala. Yes. Board Member Knox. Yes. Board Member O'Hara. Yes. Board, Board Member Osaki. Yes. That's five in favor, none against. The motion passes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Now I guess we go to uh, regular meeting on... Uh, somebody like to make a motion on that? for the regular meeting to be at 7 p.m. on Monday, November the 8th in the City Council Chambers located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard, Apache Junction. I so move. All those in favor? Second, Mr. Chair. Oh, Mr. Sir, need a chair, second. I'll second it. Board Member Osaki. Yes. Board Member Shane Beck. Yes. Board uh, Vice Chair Durbala. Yes. Board Member Knox. Yes. Board Member O'Hara. Yes. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Okay, then I would call for adjournment. Do I don't need a second on that, do I? You don't need a vote either. You just slam the door. <laughs> We're done.